Hey guys, Kick Creep here. Uh, today I want to continue our discussion on wet weather layers. Uh, a viewer reached out to me asking me about a garment that he has. Uh, it looked like it was a PCU Block Zero Level 6 made by uh, Orc Industries. And he was, you know, it was in pretty rough condition and he was asking me like what he should do with it, should he sell it, should he get rid of it, you know, what's up. And from the photos that he sent me, it looked like it was just the seam tape that was deteriorating. And I figured that this would be a really cool opportunity for me to not only help him, but also help anyone else out uh, that has this issue. So today I'm gonna to be showing you how you can replace the seam tape on a wet weather garment yourself. Now doing this is actually pretty easy. Uh, it's just kind of time consuming. And a lot of the materials that you need are probably in your house already. Um, you really just need a towel, some wax paper, uh, cookie paper, parchment paper, anything like that should work. Um, I wouldn't recommend printer paper because uh, it's just gonna like leave paper behind kind of like a sticker. Um, an iron, uh, some scissors, and then all you need to do is go out and buy some seam tape, all right? So over here, this is gonna be my example for the video that I'm gonna use to replace some of the crappy seam tape on it. Uh, it's, this is also made by Orc Industries and it seems like they like to use the same kind of seam tape that you would find on something like a tent, like a rainfly on a tent. And it really has no place on something like a, a wet weather garment, right? It doesn't stand up to abuse, it's not very durable. So what I'm going to recommend is that you go out and you get three layer seam tape to repair basically anything that you're going to be uh, putting through some hard use, right? So there are three different kinds of seam tape. There's one layer, two layer, and three layer. I'm not gonna get into that. I'm just gonna tell you right now, get three layer, and it's made for hard shells and you know wet weather garments. So what exactly is seam tape? Well, essentially when you make a garment, right, you're joining a bunch of different pieces of fabric together, and then you're also going to be adding on zippers and Velcro and stuff like that. And when you do that, you're creating a space for water to get through, right? So where the seams meet on two pieces of fabric or where you punch the needle through on the fabric, um, it's gonna create holes, it's gonna create gaps, right? So now you no longer have a waterproof garment, no matter what it's made out of or how well it's treated, okay? So you need to seal those seams up and the best way to do that is with seam sealing tape, okay? Over time, it will deteriorate. Um, you know, if you go on eBay and you're looking for a good example of a hard shell like this or um, the improved rain suit, you will find occasionally that the seam tape is in crappy condition. Um, so it might be a good idea for you to buy it at a lower price and then take the time to repair it yourself, right? So again, this is a pretty time consuming process. This is not something that you're going to be able to do like out in the field, right? Um, if you're a backpacker in the back country or if you're in the military and you're at an FTX or if you're deployed, uh, you definitely don't have the luxury of carrying an iron and being able to meticulously replace that seam tape. Um, so if you have to repair your wet weather layer out there, you're most likely going to need to use something like a water-based seam sealant. Uh, these work fine for like tents and stuff like that or you're just gonna take some duct tape and just patch that hole up. But both of these really are not a replacement for seam sealing tape, all right? By actually ironing on that tape to the seam, you're creating a very strong bond to the garment and it's going to stand up to a, a lot more abuse. Uh, so I hope you find this video helpful and uh, let's get started on this guy right here. You're gonna get your iron, you're gonna turn it on and then you're going to ensure that it's getting hot don't touch it and then leave it up like this, right? Don't just leave it down. You're gonna fucking do something bad. You're gonna remove the seam tape that's already there, right? Like that piece of crap here. And then you're going to replace it. So in order to remove it, you don't wanna just rip it because you can see how tough it is in some spot. You're gonna start taking off that waterproof coating or just rip the garment entirely. So you don't wanna do that. What you're gonna do is, you're gonna take your parchment paper or your wax paper, whatever the hell it is, then you're going to warm, oof, nice. Then you're gonna warm this up, and then as you warm it, you're gonna start taking it off. And not only will the heat melt it on, but it will also help it come off. So you always wanna do this while the glue 
is melted, okay? So it looks like the seam tape going up the rest of the way is okay. Uh, I don't really feel like messing with that. But then as we get closer to the top, we'll see that that seam tape is in pretty crappy condition. So we're gonna remove that as well. So take your, your parchment paper and you're gonna melt that glue. And then we're gonna get it while it's hot and we're gonna start to remove it. If it's hot enough, you might not even need the heat anymore. You should be able to just peel it right off, just like that. So this seam tape is fine, so I'm not gonna fuck with that, but everything from here and up, I do want to apply. So I'm gonna take a length of it and I'm going to guesstimate. Uh, I like to leave a little bit of overlap just to make sure that I get everything. And we're going to place it exactly where the old seam tape was. But yeah, so once you have that placed, now you're just gonna put your wax paper right on top of it. And then you're just gonna apply some heat. And just slide it around. Don't just leave it in one place. That might melt the garment. Really try to press that on. And then take it off very carefully. And then really try to isolate that area that you're working with. Try not to like get it on anything else as best as possible. Now, I know this isn't a hard shell, but when you do get a hard shell jacket from the factory, uh, that seam tape that they put on there is not only heated, but it's also under an immense amount of pressure, right? So when you apply it yourself with just a regular iron, uh, don't be surprised if you're going to have to start replacing it more frequently. Um, so just make sure you get a ton of seam tape and you regularly check your garment for any kind of uh, spotty seam taping, right? Now over here, if you can see, there is a spot where the seam taping is starting to uh, come undone. Uh, overall, it's still pretty okay, um, but it's really not in the worst condition. So if you don't want to replace a ton of seam tape, you can just go back over it with uh, an iron. And there you go, I mean, it looks beautiful. Um, now with a rain jacket like this, I, you might not be able to tell, but it looks like I'm melting the waterproof material a little bit, so be careful with that. And then over here on the other side of the collar, we seem to have the same issue where the seam tape is just kind of crappy and I just want to replace that with good seam tape. Um, so we'll just do this one more time. So now you can see I've replaced the seam taping up at the collar where it was starting to come apart. Um, so now when I have this jacket on, like I don't have it zipped up all the way. I don't have this nasty, ugly seam tape showing. Um, but if you do have a garment or if you're looking at a garment online that has crappy seam tape, this is a very time consuming, but also fairly easy process that you can do for you to you know, restore, repair, and uh, you know, rejuvenate, I guess. This is the Marine Corps' new extreme cold weather bag. And I bought this pretty cheap because it had a, a pretty big hole in it. And you know, that's not really great because um, these things are designed to be water resistant. You don't want water to get directly into the, uh, the batting or the insulation of the, <clears throat> of the sleeping bag. It's just not good for it. So I bought it cheap and then I did a little bit of, you know, seam tape work here, um, obviously, it's a, a different color, kind of wish I used the darker color, but you know, like I showed you before, I can always just take that off with some heat and then reapply it. Um, this is actually now glued a little bit to the batting in there. So I don't want to do that because you don't want to take batting out. And you can also see in here, I had to do some repairs here. Now this is the little brother of the extreme cold weather bag. This is the US Marine Corps three season bag. And this thing's awesome. And I also got this for a pretty good price 
because again, because again, it had a, a few holes here and there. And what I did was, instead of buying like a patch that matches the camo or whatever, um, what I did was I just, again, I took some seam tape and I made my own patch, right? So all I did was I cut a little piece of that and then I cut all of the corners off in order to make sure that we don't have these, you know, sharp corners that are going to be more likely to come off, right? So, I mean, that's pretty ugly, but, uh, but yeah, you can just put this over any little hole that you have and then you can just go ahead and iron over it. And that's going to make sure that water doesn't come into direct contact with the batting. It's gonna ensure that you can waterproof this with DWR and water can run off and not just wet out the insulation. Just do keep in mind that with something like a sleeping bag, uh, you do not want to melt the batting inside, okay? If you apply too much heat for too long, you are going to permanently damage that batting. So just make sure that you are really isolating that area. And what I generally like to do is I kind of do what uh, mountaineers do with like a down sleeping bag in order to you know, pull the, the down feathers back in. I like to actually fold the material itself so that I'm not, I don't have any insulation there. I can put the material, just the nylon shell over the towel and then parchment paper, and then I can apply heat, right? So that's gonna make sure that you don't destroy the batting on the inside. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope that this was helpful. Uh, it always hurts to see something that's collectible or you know very expensive uh, just deteriorate before your eyes. So being able to work on stuff ourselves is always cheaper and faster than having someone else do it for you. But if you do want more information on this, go on YouTube. I mean, there's tons of professional uh, seamstresses and people that do stuff like this for a living that will get way more in depth on how to do certain things and how to go around curves and all that. Um, this is more of just like uh, quickly repairing, you know, uh, working garments. But, you know, do check out, you know, uh, how professionals do stuff like this. You know, I'm just some guy, right? So thank you again, and uh, I will see you soon.